right? It has value to try to understand identity. And, like there is value in trying to create frames to help us understand things. So we're going to start off by I'm going to introduce you to three researchers who have tried to map sexual orientation. Uh, where are the handouts for that one? Uh, which one is that? The models of sexual orientation. Uh, is that Yay. that one? Yeah. We need to get those out around the room. Yeah. Yeah. And they are coming. So I'm going to start talking anyway, but they, they will be distributed so you'll have some visual stuff to look at. So models of sexual orientation, I'm going to introduce you to three researchers who have tried to map or you know, create a frame to help us understand sexual orientation. The first is the most, sex, most famous sexual orientation mapper of all. Who might that be? Kinsey. Kinsey. Raise your hand if you've heard of the Kinsey scale. That is the first map that I will be talking about. Kinsey was a researcher who did his work in the 1940s. And just for framing, do you think people were talking openly about sexuality back then? <laughs> do you think we're talking openly now, in this decade? No. No. We're not even close yet, but we have made a lot of progress. So back then, things were a whole lot worse. So back in the 1940s, Kinsey and his colleagues undertook the first large-scale research study ever done in the United States of human sexuality. And he and his colleagues interviewed over 6,000 males. And they asked them questions that had never been asked before in any kind of large population way. And he asked them about their behavior and their fantasies and all kinds of other stuff. And out of that came this book called Sexuality of the Human Male. And one of the most important, I think one of the most important things about the book is this model that he created that ended up being called the Kinsey Scale, in which he created a continuum with, of, his was zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, so a seven point continuum. And at one end was exclusive heterosexuality, and the other end was exclusive homosexuality, and in between was everybody else. One of the central findings of Kinsey's work was that people are, in fact, not just at the edges of the continuum, but we are also to be found along the continuum. So that's Kinsey. So his map is a simple little line. It's a cute little line, the Kinsey scale. The second map is one that gets a little bit more complicated. About a generation after Kinsey, a psychiatrist named Fritz Klein decided to do his maps. And what he did is that he looked at the Kinsey data, and he looked at all the other research that had been done to date, and his conclusion was that this little line is not complicated enough to hold our complex sexuality. That sexuality is not just one thing, because if you just had a line, what one thing would you be measuring? What one part of our sexuality would you be measuring? So what he did is he said, it's more complicated than that. And Kinsey knew that, by the way. But it wasn't reflected on the, on the map. So what Klein did is he made seven different variables that he thought were important, including behavior, including fantasies, including emotional attraction, including self-identity, including what community you like to hang out in, and so on and so forth. So he had seven different variables. And then he also added in something very interesting, which is the idea of time as a variable. So here's a question for all of you. This is a private question. Don't say anything out loud until I say so. This is a private <laughs> question. But I want you to think of your own selves. Is there anyone here who's under 16 years old? OK, good. Not good that they're not here, but good for the example I'm going to give. Think, think of yourself when you were 14 or 15 years old. I apologize in advance to those of you for whom that was not prime fabulous. For me, that was kind of the worst time of my life. So I apologize if I'm going to ask you to go there for a minute. But think of yourself when you were 14 or 15 years old, and think about how you understood your own sexuality back then. How much time did you spend thinking about it, if any? <laughs> These private questions. Did you have a label? If so, what was that label? What texture did your sexuality have? What values did you attach to your sexuality? How did you understand your sexuality? What did you do about your sexuality, either privately with yourself or with other people, if anything? What the kinds of things did you fantasize about? if you did, romantically or sexually or both? All those questions, 14, 15 years old. 
Everybody there? Now think of yourself in 2017 and ask yourself the same questions. Ask yourself the same questions. Do you want me to repeat them? Oh, God, if I pass this test. Um, <laughs> did you have a label for your sexuality? Do you have a label now for your sexuality? If so, what is that label? Um, what texture does your sexuality have? What percentage of your brain space does it take up on average in a given day? Um, what values do you attach to your sexuality? What do you fantasize about? What do you do? What actions do you take regarding your own sexuality? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Is there anybody in this room whose sexuality has not changed in any of those ways since you were 14 or 15 years old? Is there anyone who's exactly the same now? Two people. And this is actually pretty typical of what I see. There are some people who actually experience their sexuality as very unchanging over the course of their life, but I believe that most people, we change as we go through our lives. Our sexuality is experienced differently at different points of our life. And by the way, this is true even if your sexual orientation label stays the same throughout your entire life. So even if you, for example, identify as straight and you always identify as straight throughout your life, that doesn't mean that you're going to experience your sexuality in the same way throughout your entire life. So this is a really important thing. So Klein introduced the variable of time. So he made three columns. And one column was past, one column was present, and one column was ideal. And the ideal column asks the question, if you could be anywhere on the continuum for a particular aspect, where would you wish to be on that continuum? Do we actually get to decide where we're going to be? I don't think we do. So it's more of an aspirational or a values question. If you could, where would you wish to be? And so he has past, present, and ideal, and seven different variables. And by the way, the older I get, the more I realize the past is not a big enough space. Like, which past? Do you mean last year? Or do you mean when I was 40? Or do you mean when I was 30? I'm not going to fall off the stage. Or <laughs> nor am I going to touch the mic. Do you mean when I was 20? Do you mean when I was 15? Like, there, I have a lot of different pasts. But I think that even starting to understand the idea of change, potential for change over time and how we experience ourselves is a really important thing to add. So Klein scale has three, three columns and seven rows. How many boxes is this scale? Very good. You all passed the math test. 21 boxes. So Klein scale actually gives us a lot more information about ourselves. What it doesn't do, Kinsey's really great for shorthand, because I can say, hey, I'm a Kinsey 3, what about you? <laughs> for Klein, I'd have to say, would you like to have lunch and sit down and go over? Yeah, we'd have to spend some time talking about it. It's not, so, it's not shorthand. It's definitely a longhand chart. Anyway, so that's Klein, that's Kinsey. The third map is a different kind of map, and that was done around the same time as the Klein sexual orientation grid.